Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show, and today we're going to be exposing financial gurus and why you shouldn't listen to them from none other than Ramit Sethi. Now, if that name sounds familiar, it's because he has a channel on YouTube called I Will Teach You To Be Rich and a Netflix TV show where he basically goes through people's personal finances and then teaches them how to be rich. Uh, think of him kind of like a Caleb Hammer, except polite. <laughs> He, he's very gentle with the people, and uh, you know, it doesn't quite make for as interesting TV as Caleb Hammer when he's just reaming on people, yelling at them. There's something about that that just gets you going. And today he uh, posted this video, it's titled, Why You Should Stop Listening to These Financial Gurus. So with that said, I want to comment on this, because it's juicy. We're bringing out the drama today. As soon as you hit the like button and subscribe, because... It's the new year, and if you hit the like button, you're going to get seven years of, of good YouTube luck with the algorithm. So with that said, thank you so much, and now let's begin. This bad money advice that is everywhere costs people thousands or millions of dollars today, and I'm frankly sick of it. I want to stop it. So in this video, I'm going to flag some of the bad money advice that you should be aware of. And yes, I'm going to name names and specific bad advice to look out for. Yeah, he's calling out names. It's the one thing on YouTube that uh, I don't like to do that. You know, I'd like to mention if someone has a different philosophy. I talk about the philosophy. I, I just hate bringing people into drama if, if it's bad. Like if I disagree with somebody, I'll say, here's what I disagree with. We don't, the person doesn't matter. Here's the piece of advice that I personally disagree with. Here's why I disagree with it. Bringing people into it uh, usually tries to elicit a response. It's just drama, you know? Let, let's attack the philosophy, not the person. Popular financial personality, Dave Ramsey, recently casually told people that they can safely withdraw 8% of their portfolio every year during retirement. 8% means that you will run out of money before you die 60% of the time. This was a big deal on Twitter. I logged on Twitter one day, this was like a few months ago, and oh my gosh, Every other post was about Dave Ramsey and this 8% withdrawal rate. Now, for those that aren't aware, the 4% withdrawal rate is considered the gold standard of retirement. So basically, if you have 100 grand, you could withdraw 4% a year for the next 30 years in retirement, and you're good. Any longer than 30 years, you start to have a higher percentage that your money will run out. But for 30 years, the 4% rule is pretty good. If you're retiring with like 50 years to go and you're like in your 30s, maybe a 3%, 3.5%, okay? But Dave Ramsey says 8%. Now, in his video, it seems as though he's giving tailored advice to the caller who's calling in who has variable spending, doesn't have that much longer to live, is not looking for a 30-year retirement, um, and has equity to fall back on. So I think, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm just trying to make excuses for Dave Ramsey, okay? I think in Dave Ramsey's case, he was telling this one specific person, based on how long you're likely to live, everything you have to fall back on, all the discretionary spending, you could probably get away with 8%. Everyone, I think, took that as saying, oh, Dave Ramsey said 8% withdrawal rate is good. And that's the danger, is that Dave Ramsey is giving very broad-based advice, uh, and it's easy for people to get caught up and say, oh, well, Dave Ramsey said 8%, I could live off 8%, and then they run out of money and they're poor, and they gotta eat rice and beans again, so that's bad. The average person does not know what a safe withdrawal rate is. Half of the people watching this video just stopped watching once I said retirement. You guys aren't even watching this. Is anyone here? No because the everyday person does not care about the technicalities of personal finance. I tend to agree with that. When I look at retention rates on videos and just overall video click-through rate, if I talk about the stock market going down or real estate having issues, so many people watch. If I talk about early retirement, saving money, withdrawing 4%, oh my gosh, it literally gets a third of the views. A third of the views. How crazy is that? So as soon as we talk about more nuanced topics other than the market is going up or down, people tune out. That's the reality of it. That's the internet for you. Now, another absurd piece of advice that Dave tells people is that you should keep your housing costs below 28% of gross income while at the same time paying for a 15-year mortgage. Now, that's pretty conservative advice. The problem is that might have worked in 1975. It does not work now. now yeah, I tend to agree with meet on this one, but I will say, in Dave Ramsey's defense, I'm trying to defend Dave Ramsey here, oh my god, this whole video is me defending Dave Ramsey, okay? I'm, I'm trying to look for the bright spots here, okay? I wonder how many people would be able to buy a smaller house in a less desirable neighborhood, maybe a little bit further away, 
and fall within the parameters of it being more affordable. Instead of stretching their budget, trying to get you know the most they could possibly get uh, you know afford, I always think that people should take their budgets and then minimize it as much as you can. So if you're approved for a five hundred thousand dollar home, look look at three fifty. If you're looking for a seven hundred thousand dollar home, look at four fifty. You know five hundred grand. Really, do not go too crazy on a house. Just in case something comes up, you never want to be in a position where you're forced to sell it or can't afford it. Now, I don't mind conservative advice, but we need to adapt with the times. We need to show people that, hey, sometimes it's better to rent. Sometimes it's better to own. Sometimes you need to consider all your options instead of being shoehorned into advice that would have worked in 1984. Yeah, I also believe that right now is a good time to rent. Uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong, okay? You could look back at this and say, Graham, you were wrong. That was bad advice. But I'm just looking at like the numbers between renting and buying right now. Renting makes so much more sense when you look at the monthly cost. The only exception to that is if you know you're going to be in a house for more than 10 years, in which case buying starts to look a little bit better and, you know, but in the short term, for the next 10 years, it looks as though renting is the more favorable option in a lot of cases because the house that costs you $5,000 a month to buy, you could rent it for $3,000 a month. Save the difference, invest it. How much money will that be worth over 10 years? Something to consider. Let's talk about Kevin O'Leary. You've seen him on Shark Tank. He will literally tell people not to buy coffee, not to spend anything on a wedding, and he's literally wearing $6,000 plus custom Tom Ford suits. Look it up in the press. Yeah, but here's the thing though. Kevin O'Leary spending $6,000 on a suit is probably like the average person spending $6 on a suit when you look at it in proportion. I also highly agree with Kevin. I think buying coffee outside the house is dumb. Uh, I make coffee at home all the time, and if you wanna go out with your coffee, get a reusable cup, make it at home, put it in the cup, and take it out with you. It's the same thing. Uh, and spending money on weddings, there's a correlation between the amount of money you spend on a wedding and the divorce rate. The more money spent on a wedding, the higher the divorce rate. So uh, it goes to show you, don't spend money on weddings. Spend a lot less. Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Chapter one of Rich Dad, Poor Dad is actually really good. It focuses on a different way to think about money. In other words, making your money work for you. But after you finish reading that first chapter, just don't read any more past that because it all turns into complete dog shit. Uh, you know, it's, it sucks because Robert Kiyosaki was one of those books that got me so into business, entrepreneur, ship, I was about to say entrepreneurialism, uh, entrepreneurship, real estate, the idea that you could buy things that make you money, assets and liabilities, and all of those things as like a teenager, a young teenager, I loved it. I loved that book. It changed the way I thought about money and life and business. I'd highly recommend everyone read it. Um, so I'm mixed on this one. I'm not kidding when I tell you that Robert Kiyosaki literally said that the best investment is cans of tuna fish. I'm not, I'm not joking, he actually said that. What? All right, that's weird. That's like someone going off on some rant. It's like, okay, grandpa, you know, we all have that family member, goes off on cons conspiracies, and they, oh, you know, I heard on this website that the doomsday, this, uh, all right. It sounds like Robert Kiyosaki's gotten to that point. I love comments from people who say, Ramit, you got rich writing a book on how to get rich. Let me just respond to this once and for all. First off, I make about $1 per book. Now, trust me, there are much easier ways for me to make money. Yeah, Mark Manson also made a dollar a book. Sold 20 to 30 million books. He's sitting set. Oh my gosh. He has the, uh, the book, uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. Fantastic book. I highly recommend it, but he killed it with that book. He did so well. Tens of millions of dollars in profit. The key is to keep investing every month automatically if you'd invested ten thousand dollars and kept your money in the market over those 15 years you'd end up with just over thirty thousand dollars if you missed the 10 best investing days you'd end up with fifteen thousand dollars and if you missed the 30 best investing days you'd end up with six thousand eight hundred and seventy three dollars that's less than you began with. yeah a lot of that is because the compounding returns of like an extra two percent when the market is up that day like that extra little bit compounded over like 20 years really adds up when you have 40 of those days, so that's why. Now, if your so-called financial expert is running around telling everyone they can double your returns if you follow their advice, but then their company files for bankruptcy, 
as certain financial experts companies have, that should alarm you. Yeah, but you know what? I think in that case, that was a great learning experience. It's like, uh, you know, taking advice from someone who's successfully married today but got divorced in the past and they kind of know what to look out for. You're going to have failures. Everyone is going to have failures. The more you try, the more you're going to fail as a result of that. So it's just a numbers game. So I, I wouldn't let that dissuade me. You should have a healthy distrust of anyone who says they have all the answers. Google them. Look at their photos. Do they follow their own advice? Do they represent how you want to live your life? Are they always solo taking pictures on a boat? It's always a red flag, by the way, when I see people on Instagram and it's just photos of themselves. Themselves standing in front of cars, themselves standing in front of jets and luxury goods or holding bags. They're never taking pictures with anybody else. It's always just themselves alone. Uh, it's kind of odd. It's odd to me. One person I recommend you take a look at, Katie Gaddy Tossan aka Money with Katie. Now I like her Instagram account and I love her on Twitter. She covers a lot of awesome financial issues, including cultural and gender issues with a totally fresh take. Oh, she's the writer of The Morning Brew. I love The Morning Brew. Highly recommend everybody subscribe to The Morning Brew. Um, yeah, I w and I don't have an affiliate link or anything like that, uh, but I love them. They're so nice and um, it's just, it's a great daily newsletter every single morning. Whole bunch of copycats now, but every single morning they just give you just what you need to know uh, for like a five minute read. It's fantastic. If you have made it to the end of this video, you now know what kind of advice should trigger your red flags. You should know what to look out for and also some people you can trust that have your best interests at heart. All right, so let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. As usual, I will do my best to read and respond to as many of them as possible. Happy New Year, by the way. And if you want to start this New Year off great, feel free to get some free stocks down below in the description because that could be worth all the way up to a few thousand dollars when you make a deposit. I get a commission, of course, when you sign up for that, but you get free stocks. So I think it's a pretty fair trade. The link is down below in the description. Enjoy. Thank you so much. And until next time.